and your rise isn't hasn't been that different than than a band's in the you know you got eyeballs on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And, and it goes from there. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. It, it it spreads from online to okay, people will see you. They'll tell other people you're funny. No, yeah, and I'm like Generation Y, so that's the younger generation. Everyone's worried because everyone's worried about them not being interested in buying music. But when you look around, you see how interested kids are in live music and the music culture. That I don't think I, I don't think people should be too worried about that. I mean, maybe multimillionaires will become millionaires, but uh, no. Yeah, I mean, we touched on this on some of the other panels, but when you do look out, and and maybe you're you're reading the Times and you're seeing the statistics and whatnot, and you know it, it looks like music's in this decline, but then you go out here, and people are living and breathing music and putting up with quite a lot for four days to be part of that. Do you see that in the faces when you look out, and that's open to anyone here? I mean, yeah, I think that. Um, uh, there's still a real urge to go see live bands and live music and uh, you don't get that as much as you used to. It used to be able to, there's a lot of clubs and amphitheaters that have closed down or um, bands that are having a hard time supporting themselves on the road. So uh, I think that something like this, it sort of allows somebody to say, okay, well this is my big splurge. I'm going to go out into Bonnaroo and I'm going to see all these bands. And uh, it's just great that there's still an outlet for bands to come do this. A lot of, you can't get these type of crowds everywhere. Um, and you're really, uh, and I think that it's just, people are you know, having to save money right now. So this is kind of a all for one kind of great deal. You know? So it's a good thing. And it is encouraging to see. It makes an artist feel really good because it reminds us that music is not and has never been the problem. It's industry, and um, and it just makes us feel proud to see all these people sitting around, wanting, standing around, wanting to hear music. Nothing else matters. Do you look out sometimes and see people who are clearly at their first Dave Matthews show uh, at something like this? At, at one of these, uh, normally they're on the outskirts. Okay. And you know you gotta judge the outskirts by the people that have maybe never been to a live show. I, there's a lot of people have already come up to me saying this is my first live show. Um, so which is great because you always know there's always new fans. That's the other ass element of a performance at a place like Monteru is that you're. It's as if you just walked into a club in Europe where where you're playing for 50% new fans. And so you're really going to try and work hard to win those fans over. So when you see the outskirts, if you feel like the outskirts are kind of packing in around the crowd, you feel good. It's like a good. But when you start seeing the outskirts starting to go and wander around and stuff, then you're like. Maybe we're playing the wrong song, guys. You know, like so. There's always an element. We were talking about you said the hits. You know, as a oh, I saw Kings of Leon last night, and uh, you know, definitely when the the top songs came out, you know, the crowds were got on top of it, and uh, it's nice to throw those in there once in a while. But you also really want to make sure that you're giving uh, the crowd a true performance of what you're about. So you don't want to do all hits, but it's nice to throw in a few for the outskirts and the people who might not have seen a live show, but might have heard a song on the radio. I mean, and also Motley's a, a groove and a vibe at the same time that carries people through whether they've seen you or not. I mean, is that always easy to craft in a festival setting? Well, to be honest with you, like for a band like Ozo Motley, a, uh, a festival like Bonnaroo is a blessing. And it's, <clears throat> like people have been mentioning before, the changing economic times and the paradigm shift and just what it is to sell music nowadays is so different. And for us, we've always been about the road and just touring, 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 touring. And now for uh, an institution like Bonnaroo to still be existing and still delivering music and in a really top-notch way, comparable to anything else in the world, it's just like great. So for us to still be, I don't know, it's like our third or fourth time doing it, it's just great for us. It's a blessing. Is there, uh, I mean, Taylor, when, when you were, you know, working these sort of side stages, um, I mean, you could, you could see that those were new fans. Um, the goal, I guess, is to drive them, what, to, to keep them? Um, I mean, what are you thinking about up there, or is it, hey, this is what we do, and let's show it to them? Well, it's very easy to like. It's it's been very easy to psych myself out by seeing these um, incredible acts on these huge stages, and immediately um, losing my patience.
patience and being like, I want to do that. That's what, the, that's what it is to play Bonnaroo. And then I, I stop myself and I think like, actually in these small shows, there's not as many people here, but it's just as important to to um, to these um, the audiences. And it's in, you know, they, they feel like it's, it's, it's really wonderful for them to come up to me and, and they, they take pride in, in not everybody else being there. Like I, I, it's, I, sometimes be like, oh, I hope they still like the show even though it wasn't as big as any other show they might be seeing. And then they come up and they're like, it's so cool there was just this many people here tonight. Because that made it ours. And, and so uh, it, it, it really can be said, it can be just as impactful um, on the small stage if we, uh, we're doing our job. And Brandy, you're shaking your head because that's what you want. That discovery moment at a festival where, you're, where yeah. you think you found something. Yeah, that's what it feels like. I mean, I'll go to a big show and stand there in the audience and cry. I can't help it because like, I'm so moved by the hugeness of the show and the music. And and then I get to you know a small stage and, and festivals and, and I open for Dave Matthews one time on the small stage, like the side stage out in my hometown. And I'm on the side stage and I'm just, I wish I could be on the big stage so bad, but it's true, it really is an experience for the people at that small stage that needs to be taken into consideration as, um, as maybe their big show for the day, you know? Oh, I mean, some of the favorite moments in, at festivals for us in the Horde was when we were playing for the people setting up the Porta Johns. You know, I mean, those are, those early days and those uh, those memories you make are, are amazing. And I, I trade a small stage right now for a big stage sometimes because there's a different vibe there and you can be a little more freer and experimental and 